In this example, we're going to go ahead and find a delta for a particular epsilon while using the, defin the precise definition of a limit. Then, in the second part, we're going to go ahead and find a delta for any epsilon. So when they give us and restrict us an epsilon, that means they're telling us how far from our L so that we stay within a delta distance of A. So this means that we need to find that perfect delta so that we can stay perfectly within 0.3 of our L. So if I went ahead and just drew quickly like this, and I drew, let's say, a line like this. So then um, let's say here is our A, right? And then here is the limit. They are telling us that we have no choice. We must stay within a 0.3 distance. Whatever that L is, I have to be within 0.3 top to bottom from that L, which would imply I would have to stay within some sort of delta distance within A, right? That would force a certain distance from A, right? A little to the left and right. What we want to find is this particular delta that would stay within 0.3. So we, you kind of get like this little window, right? It's like a little square window. So whatever it is, point L is, whatever L is, we want to stay within 0.3 within L, then what would we have to be within A? And so distance is always positive. Your answer should always be positive. We don't ever owe the world a mile. <laughs> the world doesn't owe us a mile. So distance A is positive the whole time. So how do we find it? Well, you know, we kind of just work our way backwards in this case. So I would go ahead and take um, f of x uh, minus 1 less than 0.3 and kind of work our way backwards, I would go ahead and put in what f of x is, which is 2x plus 5. Um, so we get absolute value 2x minus 5 less than 0.3. And then I would go ahead and work with that and have um, 2x plus 4, because 5 minus 1 is 4, less than 0.3. I see a common factor between 2 and 4, so I'm going to go ahead and factor that out and get um, 2 times x plus 2 less than point, uh, 0.3. Now what I'm looking for is this. I'm looking for this left side to be an absolute value of x plus 2. That way, if I have the less than, I can match up the delta. So notice here, I got x plus 2 by just like simplifying what that little expression was inside the absolute value. So now I can go ahead, the product, the absolute value of a product is the product of the absolute values. So I would have the absolute value of 2 times the absolute value of x plus 2 less than 0.3. Well, the absolute value of 2 we know is 2, so we'll have 2 times x plus 2 less than 0.3. I'm almost there, right? I have x plus 2 here, but I have 2 times x plus 2. I don't need 2 of the absolute value of x plus 2. I only need 1. So let's go. You got it. You got it. Let's go ahead and divide that out. So I'm going to divide each side by 2. So then I get x plus 2 um, less than 0.3 over 2. And again, you can always simplify this part as like 3 tenths, and then you'll see it's 3 twentieths. Um, you can put it in the calculator as um, 0.3 divided by uh, 2, and then it gives you that. And then feel free to hit this math button and then hit 1 to fraction, and it'll give you the 3 twentieths. So we'll have x plus 2 less than 3 twentieths. And now if I line this up of x plus 2 less than delta, 
because that's what I wanted over here, notice everything aligns, right? The x plus 2 aligns, the less than align, and lo and behold, we see what delta is. It's just going to be 3 over 20. just by aligning that. And so that's just working backwards to actually do the proof that takes a little bit more um, work, right? So um, this means that the second part is going to be the a general one. So now instead of being within 0.3 distance of L, I now will be epsilon distance within L. So what distance do I have to be within A to be an epsilon distance within L? And I'll say that again. I'm asking now what distance do I have to be within A to be within an epsilon distance of L? And that just comes literally from finding the x values that align with that epsilon, right? So if I do that, you, some of you might think, well, isn't that the same process as doing this except putting epsilon everywhere? Absolutely it is. So let's see what that looks like. Um, the process will be the same. So if I have f of x minus 1 less than uh, epsilon now instead of 0.3, I'm going to go ahead and go through this pretty quickly because it's just a kind of a repeat, right? X, 2x plus 5 minus 1 less than epsilon. Then I get the 2x my, uh, plus 4 as I did before. I factored out the 2, right? And I know the absolute value of a product is the product of the absolute values. So I know this 2 is going to come out and I'm going to have absolute value of x plus 2 less than epsilon. And I'm still, notice I'm still going to divide by that coefficient. So I get epsilon over 2. And now if I line it up like I did before, right, I'm going to see now, I see the x plus 2's line up. I see the less than's line up. And sure enough, I see this delta is going to be epsilon over 2. This means that if I want to be within an epsilon of L, I have to be within a epsilon over 2 distance within A if my function was 2x plus 5. All right, I hope this helps.